morning. Father in heaven, 
I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you, and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
the eternal home is heaven. In the meantime, we live in this life, make the best of this life, but always look forward to our eternal home that we'll eventually enjoy with our Lord. Now we know that the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed. We have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven, which is not made by human hands. In fact, the reason we groan is that we long to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. If we do, do indeed put it on, we will certainly not be found naked. To be sure, while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not want to be unclothed or to be clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the spirit as a down payment. Therefore we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But we are confident and would much prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. And for this reason we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he did while in the body, whether good or bad. Here ends the second lesson. Hallelujah. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. May your saints sing for joy. Hallelujah.
Word of God is the words of the gospel that I read to you a few minutes ago. Often the Lord Jesus spoke in parables to illustrate and apply some points he was trying to teach. One that's rather popular is the parable of the sower, where the seed is compared to the Word of God and the soil to the human heart. The parable before us today is very similar to that. The parable of the mustard seed. And it's timely because we are now in the growing season. And we'll note today how this mustard seed germinates and grows. And likewise, faith germinates and grows. So we'll focus on the parable of the mustard seed this morning. Jesus was in a beach setting. He was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and people were coming to hear him teach. In fact, they were crowding in on him in such large numbers, he asked someone to push a boat out into the water. And he climbed into that boat, sat down in it, and from that vantage point, began to teach the people. In fact, on that day, he taught a, a number of parables. And that includes the one that is before us. What should we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable should we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. Israel is famous for its mustard plants and mustard trees. And whether he's here talking about the Sinapia nigra, which is the plant, or the Salvador persica, which was the, the tree. We don't know. He probably had both in mind. And in either case, they grew to be very large, which seems strange because they were coming from this tiny little mustard seed, the tiniest of all the seeds. But it would germinate. And germination really is a miracle because God causes that. This spring we saw farmers out in the fields planting, sowing seeds. And now today we can drive past those same seeds and see plants have come up. Corn and soybeans have appeared. Or some of you may have planted the garden a month or so ago, and now you're seeing the results. Germination has taken place, plants have grown up, and are producing vegetables. Germination is something God causes. And so it's a miracle, just like faith is a miracle. The seed of God's word is planted in our hearts. Now, in some hearts are pretty hard soil. Uh, a farmer would use a plow to break up that soil so the seed can penetrate. The human heart, if it's hard, needs the law to break up that soil so the gospel can then penetrate. And when the gospel penetrates that heart, that's when spiritual germination takes place. That's when faith is created. And the Holy Spirit is the one doing that creation of faith. The Bible says no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit causes this miracle of conversion. Forgiveness of sins is also a miracle. Because all of us are born with a condition of sin. All of us sin against God's law every day. We violate his commands. And there's nothing we can do to repay God this huge debt that we owe him because of our sins. By nature, we are hapless and helpless. But we are not hopeless. That's because God in grace and mercy saw fit to send his son Jesus to take our place. He was the son of God and the son of man. Paid the penalty for our sins. 
He redeemed us by his suffering and death on the cross. And he won for us the forgiveness of sins. And when our faith rests in him, we get that forgiveness of sins. We become part of his family, part of the kingdom of God. And that really is a miracle. Gambling is very popular today. It's rather easy to do. You can go to any gas station and get lottery tickets. You can go to any bar and play with pool tabs. You can do online gambling. There's sports betting. And if you're fairly serious about gambling, there's casinos within easy driving distance. You can head over to Toma or up to Black River Falls or Wisconsin Dells. You can head down river to Marquette, Iowa, or up the river to Red Wing, Minnesota. If you're a regular gambler, you're hoping to hit the jackpot, make some easy money. Well, unfortunately, there are some people who play, who gamble spiritually. They play what's called a jackpot religion. They feel that if they put in a little bit into it, they can win the grand prize. So they may go to church a couple times a year, drop a few tokens in the offering plate, pray once in a while. But they don't want to have too involved spiritually because they got so many other things to do. But they're hoping that a little bit of religion that they practice will be enough to convince God to give them the jackpot, the grand prize of eternal life in heaven. That's shaky. What God really wants to see in us is a firm faith, a true faith, a living faith, a lasting faith, a faith that grows. The mustard tree and the mustard plant grew rapidly. It wasn't long after that mustard seed was planted in the ground and, it, and germinated that you'd see shoots coming up out of the ground. And then a trunk branches and twigs and leaves and buds and finally the aromatic fruit itself. It was one of the fastest growing plants or trees around. And it was simply amazing how that very large plant or tree could come from that tiny little seed. We also see growth in nature. Again, driving through the countryside, we'll see that this hay has been cut or is being cut. And the corn and soybeans are growing. They're a little behind schedule this year because we've had a lack of rain. And that garden that you have at home is producing radishes, beans, lettuce, and other things. Now, we can help a lot with this growth that takes place by doing some cultivating, getting rid of those weeds, doing some fertilizing to induce growth, and watering the garden or irrigating the field. But it's really God who causes the greatest growth in nature. The sunshine that God sends and the rain that he sends are the true blessing that gardens and fields need. And it seems like we're going to get a little rain later on today, which would be great for growing things. Now, when it comes to our faith, we can do our part. We can do some cultivating, cultivating those weeds of sin and, and temptations. We can fertilize using the means of grace, God's word and sacrament, which gives us strength, helps our faith grow. And for watering, well, there we have to lay hold on what God gives, the water of life. The water of life that he gives to refresh our soul and to keep us going spiritually. What a gardener wants to see is a gardener that's productive. Likewise, a farmer wants to see a productive field. And God wants to see productivity in our faith and life. He wants to see a living faith. He wants us in our life to be active. Seeing the meaning and purpose of life 
and living our lives to the glory of God. He wants to see us living a life that renders service to other people and to Him. He wants us to have a life that is truly productive and active. Now, what species of the mustard tree, of the mustard the mustard seed produced was the mustard tree, the Salvadora uh, persica. It grew so large, it was so sturdy, the birds of the air would actually seek shelter and shade in its branches. They feel safe and secure in the branches of that tree. And again, it seemed amazing that such a fine tree could come from such a small seed. We could be like that mustard tree in a sense that we could be of support to other people. But we have to have strong branches for that, a strong faith. Then people can come to us for counsel and encouragement. We can provide an example to others and give support that is needed. But we ourselves need to be strong first before we can help others. And the greatest help of all, of course, comes from God. As the Bible describes God as our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, God is there for us all the time. But especially in times of trouble, we need to go to Him, flee to Him for refuge, turn to Him for strength and help, and He gives it. Because remember, God is not only strong, powerful, He's also loving, gracious, merciful, forgiving. He's the real deal. And so we need to lean on God for support. And He will give it to us because He is our refuge and strength. This parable of mustard seed applies very nicely to the growth of the kingdom of God. Started very small. I think the Christian church started in Jerusalem with Jesus' 12 disciples and a few hundred other believers. But it grew from there, it spread throughout Judea and Samaria, and eventually all of the Mediterranean world. We today want to see the gospel spread everywhere. And we can support the work of missions. And be thankful that our synod is very active in the mission field. We are doing mission work right now in 54, 54 countries. And that's amazing. And more and more people throughout the world are hearing and believing the gospel. Today is Father's Day. Congratulate those of you who are fathers. Father's Day does not receive as much hope law as Mother's Day. But we do need to recognize fathers. They have a very important responsibility. And it is a privilege for them to serve as fathers. They have a high honor of being leaders in their family. But along with that high honor comes high responsibility. Fathers need to set a good example for their children. And they also need to give solid support to their family. Grandfathers also can offer support and encouragement to their grandchildren. And they, too, can be a good example to them, can encourage them, and most certainly can pray for them. And grandfathers and fathers can be especially thankful if their children and grandchildren are part of this kingdom of God that started many years ago, but which we're all privileged to be part of, a kingdom that has grown. It's simply amazing how that tiny little mustard seed could germinate and grow into that very large plant or tree. It was a miracle. Faith is also a miracle. The Holy Spirit causes that. That faith needs to grow. 
Now, if you do plant a garden, you need to take care of it. Cultivate, fertilize, water. You also need to take care of your faith by fertilizing those weeds of sin and temptations. Fertilize with the means of grace, God's word and sacrament. Enjoy the water of life. And thank God for it. Thanks to him, you can have an active, living, productive faith. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we now join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as the offering is now brought forward. We lose what on ourselves we spend. We have as treasure without end. Whatever, Lord, to you we lend, who gave us all. To you from whom we all derive our life, our gifts, our power to give. Oh, may we ever with you live, who gave us all. Amen. Thank you. And we pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for planting the seed of faith in our hearts. We realize that we do not deserve this because of our sins and shortcomings. But we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts through your word and sacrament. We pray that our faith would continue to grow as we cultivate the sins that still plague us and fertilize our faith with your word. Help us maintain a living and active faith that we might serve you and others. Give us your support and guidance as we walk the path of life. And lead us at last to our heavenly home. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Special prayer will be offered this morning for Paul and Joyce, Joyce Garnas, who are celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray for your servants, Paul and Joyce Garnas, who are celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary. We thank you for being with them in good days and bad, in sickness and in health, and for guiding and blessing them over these 54 years. We especially thank you for keeping them in the one true faith. And we pray now that in the future you would keep them strong in their faith, in their service and love to you and to one another. Grant them every blessing that you have in mind for them. They may continue to rejoice in your salvation and in the fact that you are their refuge and strength. And we pray this in Jesus' name, who's also taught us to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be seated for the next hymn, number 402.
Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Ha, 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 ha. 